Criteria for success, number five, painting. That the paint is evenly applied, no, <laughs> no drippy gloopies. All right, let's get the show on the road. Welcome back, let's get going with number five, painting. Evenly applied, feather it out, feather it out. No drippy gloopies. Let's see how that goes. Let's take a look at greater detail. Yeah. All right. To have an evenly applied paint coat, it really all starts with sanding. See the difference? This is lighter. You could kind of, kind of tell it's smoother versus the rough cut. All of your surfaces have to be sanded anyway. When you get it down to as smooth as smooth as the sandpaper will let you, that will help the coat apply evenly. Look at the end cut. See the fundamental difference between an unsanded end cut and a sanded end cut. This is smooth and the paint's gonna lie down nice and slick on this. Let's take a look at what it does. But first, let's review, shall we? We have the dip technique. Dip it about halfway up to the metal band. No, no need to go higher than that. Dip it, scrape, scrape, tilt it. it buys you time so the paint doesn't drip down. Tilt it and bring it to your work surface and you feather it out. Just stretching it out, feathering it, giving it a nice even coat. Dip, scrape, tilt, avoiding thick, drippy runs, like so. Feather those thick, drippy runs out, and you're sitting pretty. So now let's take a look at what it looks like on the rough side, if it's not sanded enough or at all, which it needs to be. See how it's creating these, this, this one on with just a couple back and forth strokes? This is creating little pockets of emptiness right there, so you really have to go back and forth over it and things like that. It's doable, gotta sand it anyway, but this is what the other thing, other side looks like. Now let's go here. When you paint a sanded end cut, pretty smooth. And here's the rough side. This end cut has not been painted. It still creates those little holes of a paint gap. So it takes more time and more paint to kind of jam it in there like so. <clears throat> to kind of get the bristles into the porous holes. And you can see that the texture is different. This is kind of a bumpy and textured, while well, this is smoother. Let's dry it out and see what it looks like. You can speed dry it if you have permission to use a hairdryer from your family, or, or time will dry it. Let's review, some time has passed. Let's take a look here at the paint. Let's see what we got. This was the smooth side. Smooth and feathered, while well, this was Gloopy, gloopy and drippy. You could tell this was also sanded. It helps that this wood was sanded and this end cut was sanded. A nice smooth application while this end cut was not sanded. So you could tell it's, it's porous, it's bumpy, it's got holes and gaps. So whoa, let's take it at the gloopy. You could, well, I actually didn't turn out too bad, but right here you could see the little gloop, see how the, the light catches the gloopy drip there. It's a little thicker, just a little thicker right there. Here's another one to show you the same thing. This is feathered out smooth coat, while this bottom half is thick and gloopy. You could see the drip hanging out there. Yeah.